Good morning to all of you in the Northern Hemisphere. It's really lovely to be able to have this session with you. So for the next roughly 40 minutes, we'll be together and please do feel free to use the chat. I'll try to keep an eye on it um, while I'm taking you through some of the new features in Mahara 2304 which by the looks of it, we are going to release tomorrow and therefore then will be available to you. Before I jump into what is new this year, I would like to remind all of you that we also had something new last year and that is the podcast that I started at the end of September last year with Lisa Donaldson, um, formerly from DCU, as first guest on the podcast. And since then, 16 others have already followed. Um, just yesterday, we released episode 17 with Rita Super Prokopetz, um, who is working from Canada. And uh, in that podcast, we are sharing stories from the community, not just from the Mahada community, but from the wider portfolio community in order to share any of the, uh, all the wonderful pedagogical scenarios that are people working with, how they are using portfolios at their various organizations around the world and bringing that knowledge and that insight to all of you. So I hope some of you have already listened to the podcast at podcast.mahara.org or if you are a regular listener to podcasts, you will also find it in your standard podcast app and can listen to it there. But then also, if you are interested to be interviewed and become a guest on the show, then please do send an email through to podcast at mahada.org so that we can uh, dis discuss what you'd like to share and can then schedule it in. The podcast is released every other week on Wednesdays. So we have typically have two episodes per month. In March, it was even three episodes. So I'm always really stoked to be talking to people about their practices and then sharing it with the rest of the world. But now let's get into Mahada 2304. It is the April version of Mahada. And in this version, we do not have a lot of, lot of new features. Instead, we have two massive new features um, that incorporate a number of smaller new features. In particular, the outcomes portfolio, which is a completely new way for us to work with portfolios. Um, and that incorporates a number of improvements that we could make as part of that development work for one of our clients whom we are supporting through development work in the UK. And so the outcomes portfolio allows students and also their tutors to track progress against outcomes. So in Mahara, if you've used it already for a while, you might have seen that we have smart evidence, which allows you to map competencies, uh, to map portfolios against competencies and align them to competencies or subcompetencies. We also have the portfolio completion functionality, which is a simpler version of a competency portfolio in a way, because it allows you to just tick, check off pages within a portfolio to make sure that you've completed all the requirements and therefore you could use it more flexibly. And now the outcomes portfolio allows instructors to formulate outcomes for a student um, or for multiple students and then at, um, have activities going with those outcomes that the students complete and then track their progress against. So that is defining activities to complete and the activities are then tracked on the portfolio pages. And beyond that, it is actually a very collaborative approach to the outcomes portfolio because it was created for um, our client in the UK who 
have educational health care plans for their students. So where the students need some assistance in everyday tasks or in tasks that help them to get to the college level or to the university level. And um, therefore, they do need to be um, guided very carefully and also consistently. And therefore, we took the approach of creating that portfolio functionality in the groups. But that doesn't mean that it can't be expanded in the future also to other areas in Mahara. Now, as I had already mentioned, as part of that entire development work, we could also make a number of workflow improvements um, and usability improvements that we are trialing with this new portfolio type um, in order to see how it works, um, whether it um, should then also be incorporated into other areas before making the change everywhere. But some changes have already been made um, in other areas of Mahara. So in order to actually not just tell you about that new functionality, but to show it to you, I'm going to switch to the live demo now. Um, and I will be switching between my two personas of Petra, who is the instructor or the tutor, and then Paula, um, Paula Paulson, who is my uh, student. The outcomes portfolio is activated on an institution basis, and um, the what what a system administrator would do, so somebody with access to the database and to the server, they would um, load outcome types and also subjects that can be um, mapped against outcomes, which we'll show shortly, um, set that up in the database via a command line script. So there is currently no administrator interface because we did want to focus on features that benefit the students rather than creating an elaborate administration area. Because initially for that client, um, there was only going to be one person who needed to load things in and they were technically um, very capable and therefore we focused on other areas. So now once outcomes portfolios have been established on the institution level, um, a group administrator, in our case this is a staff member, they can set up an out in a group type that is outcomes, um, outcomes, and that automatically hides certain things in the group and sets certain parameters. So for example, what you can't see in this case is that there's a copy button. And also when we look at what Paula, our student can see, so in this case, Paula, a student, doesn't even have the create button there because it's a, an experience where the student can fill in a pre-made portfolio, but cannot makes, uh, cannot do certain actions themselves, but they are reserved for an instructor or tutor, in this case with the role of a group administrator. Now, once the portfolio has been set up, and that is really just creating a collection, the um, portfolio can get outcomes. And in this case, I've already set up a number of outcomes so that you can see the overview page, which in a way resembles quite a bit the one from the portfolio completion, because there we also want to show very like, very easily on that cover page, which outcomes have already been completed and which ones are still open. Now, if I want to add another outcome, I can do so by going into the configuration of the portfolio and then um, adding another outcome to this collection. So in this case, I already have four outcomes and I can add a fifth outcome and that can be done at any point in time um, throughout the portfolio creation process so that I give it a short title, a long title, and can then also assign an outcome type. So in this case, I'll select digital ethics, click save, and my fifth outcome would have been added. When I click the panel, it then shows the longer description 
and has the outcome type, which also has a different color assigned in order to make it easier to then differentiate from other outcome types. And through the help icon, can you see what the long title is? So that text in here that is essentially dy almost dynam dynamically created based on, in this case, what is in the database um, so that you can have, can have um, outcome types defined for your institution or for a sub group in your institution and then also assign them colors to it. Now, the second part of that outcomes portfolio is once you have the um, outcome set up, you can add activities to it. And so those activities are your regular Mahara pages. Uh, an instructor can set up those activities. And in this case, I've already done that. And again, gave it a short title and then the long description and also have an outcome that is automatically added because I created a, created that activity within the first outcome. Therefore, also the outcome type is di displayed. And when I open the panel, more information is shown so that I can also say who the responsible staff member is, who is tracking this outcome, to which subject this outcome belongs, what the time frame is. So in this case, I only have an end date, don't have a start date. And then I can, as instructor, also add any information around the strategies and support that the student is receiving, which resources I'm adding, and also what learner support that student received. So if I enter information there, it is saved immediately. I can um, always update that field. And then if I go in as student, just need to make sure that I'm going into the right type then. When I go into that same page as a student, then I can see the information that Petra has put in, but I myself cannot add anything to it. What you would have also noticed, and that is one of the usability improvements that we've made, is that while the outcome hasn't been signed off and also the, the page, the activity hasn't been signed off, I automatically go into the edit mode of the portfolio so that I can immediately add my content. And adding content is entirely up to the student. Uh, they can add blocks to it like they can normally do. And as you can see in this case, uh, the block is added automatically in full width. That is also one of the improvements that we have made to cater for a more for, for an easier layout in portfolios and also make it easier for those on mobile devices that create portfolios there so that when you go to a desktop, it, uh, the, the block is displayed in full width rather than just um, about a third of the screen. So students can add blocks, tutors can add blocks because we are in the group portfolio, therefore have all that collaboration functionality available. However, um, because it is a guided portfolio, the student is not able to do everything. So, for example, they cannot select the achievement level for a particular checkpoint. So checkpoints are really just the, the check-ins uh, during the completion of an activity where students can then report back and um, also use that as their reflecting space if they want. But uh, instructors can also use the checkpoints in order to provide information on where they see the student is at if the student is not providing that. And so the achievement levels can also be set on a, in this case, per activity page, because all of these achievement levels here on checkpoints are always tied to a particular page. 
So if you're going back in as our instructor, just need to refresh the page so that you can see the checkpoint. And as you can see, I now have a drop down menu available for level one, two, three, and four. Uh, we decided to not display the, the, uh, the, the, the custom values in the drop down in case those values get very long um, so that we would then potentially run into some issues with the with the drop down so for this phase one approach we just have levels one through four and then the explanation is available via the help icon and so we have three ways of tracking progress for a student the lowest level checking is via that checkpoint so that can be part of an activity and an activity can have multiple checkpoints depending over how many weeks uh, that activity is to be completed. Then once the entire activity has been completed, um, all the, the necessary tasks performed, the page can be signed off by the instructor. And once the page has been signed off, that status is then tracked in the outcomes overview page. So in this case, we've just signed off coding exercises and assignments. So that sign off is tracked here. The checkpoints are not tracked on this page as well because there can also be multiple checkpoints. So for the time being, we are only tracking sign off and then the entire um, outcome that can then also be marked as completed. And as long as an outcome is not marked as completed, you can always add new activity pages and can make changes. You can also go into a page that has been signed off um, and still edit it if you like. Um, but once a page has been signed off, the initial view is the, the view mode because we assume that the, the work has been completed. And you can also add more outcomes if you like um, in order to add to that portfolio. Once an outcome has been marked as completed, uh, the progress cannot be changed. Um, and everything is locked in. You also do not see the add activity button anymore. So again, one of those small indicators and guidances of, okay, this is done. I can't accidentally add something. You would need to take the sign off off and then you can add um, elements again. So kind of a number of small improvements that we can also add in other areas in Mahara, including kind of the, the full page width for the blocks and working with new ideas of how to represent complex learning scenarios that do um, that organizations want to use for tracking with students. And then also having this very big complex functionality that in the past had been done via an array of databases in Moodle that needed to be clicked individually and did not really show the connections between the different elements um, to the satisfactory approach. So that's why that client had asked us to look into how that could be represented in Mahara and where we also looked into how to make it visually available and distill the information and make things um, also readable and viewable so that you could, on a first glance, get through the portfolio easily and also add onto it. So that was one very big um, improvement and new feature in Mahara. And I look really forward to any of you who want to try it out to give it a go and to let us know how it goes, what works, um, where you think you might like to add on to, um, how you might like to see it changed. Because of course, this is version one of the implementation. And um, there are always things that can be improved, uh, but we wanted to make sure that it is available to 
uh, to the community in order to also get that feedback and see um, how others might also want to use it, who might have a very different context. Now, I did also say that we made another uh, biggerish feature and um, while that first feature was sponsored by a client in the UK, this other feature now, the portfolios, uh, the change to the portfolio submission process was sponsored by uh, a client of ours in Canada who work with a learning management system where they do not have as much control over how to unlock portfolios via the um, via the LMS because it is not Moodle where we have the Moodle uh, the Mahara assignment submission plugin and so we were bound to do everything only via LTI and in this case LTI 1.3 advantage um, and because there are certain limitations in place we were looking into well how can we improve the workflow of students accidentally <laughs> submitting portfolios, but then removing the link in the assignment, therefore not being able to unlock their portfolios and needing to contact support. And so we when it came back to a conversation that we had um, a few years ago already when we reviewed um, or when we were in the development stages of the LT original LTI implementation. And it uh, turned out that making a copy of the portfolio would actually be a very good idea and can also help in a number of other cases. So what we are doing now is that when you submit a portfolio, you actually do not submit the original portfolio like you do at the moment. Um, therefore, making it possible for you to continue working on that. Um, which also helps because you can more easily actually submit collections for formative assessment. Because the original portfolio is not locked, a copy is locked, you can kind of continuously um, submit another copy for week two, submit another copy for week three, while at the same time you are working on the overall, continue working on the overall portfolio. And just something a bit more on the technical side is that we added a new released status to portfolios. So what does that now look like? Let's take a look as um, Paula, this is Petra, so I need to become Paula. So um, just normally Paula created a portfolio, um, which are in her case semester reflections. And so she already has three pages in this portfolio, week one, week two, and then week three. So week two and three, she hasn't done anything yet, but for week one, she has already done something. And so um, she now wants to submit that for assessment, submits that to her portfolio group, and that can happen um, both here in Mahara or also via Moodle. The Mahara assignment submission plugin is currently um, in review to make it possible to use that new portfolio uh, copying process. Uh, the standard external tool implementation in Moodle already supports it. And also if you were to use another learning management system that solely relies on the built-in LTI features, then you would be able to use it there as well. So now what you see here on screen is that it says copy three pages, one block and zero artifacts and portfolio submitted, you can view your submission. So that now goes to the copy of that portfolio that you have just seen. So it's, it's really a standard copy, includes all the pages, all the collections, but you cannot edit it. The edit button is missing. And automatically, you also see when you actually submitted that portfolio so that you can track it and know which portfolio you submitted when. Now, if I wanted to 
see my submissions. Of course, if you submit something many, many times, um, we thought the, the screen would be, could be quite overloaded with very similar portfolios, not really easily seeing, well, what are the portfolios that I can work on and which ones are the ones that I've submitted. And so we added a new functionality where you can also check that you want to see submitted portfolios. When you then click the button, you see your submissions. And um, yellow again is portfolios that are currently submitted. And we have that new status for release portfolios. What we've also improved on is that we are not just trying to identify the uh, submission status via color, because you might not really be very easily able to see that on your screen, depending on um, the color profile. And so we also added different icons. So when your portfolio is entirely submitted, we use the standard submission icon, which then expands through the information when it was created and where it was submitted. When a portfolio has that new status of released, you can change the portfolio information. So you can give it a new title because the portfolio has already been returned from assessment, but it is stern, but currently it is still linked to the original portfolio and therefore you cannot make any changes on it. So we wanted to ensure that portfolios are not just handed back and then students wonder, well, which portfolio do I need to work on? But they can make more of a conscious decision whether they want to leave that portfolio as one of their submitted portfolios because they know they continue on the original portfolio, or if they want to um, kind of promote this portfolio to a standard portfolio, um, therefore removing the status of a submission and then having it available as regular portfolio that they can edit, where they can remove pages and so on. So that is functionality that we'd also like you to try out. And probably you'll be trying that maybe even earlier than the outcomes portfolio. And we'd also like to hear from you how you're working with it, how you especially also manage the portfolios. Um, so when portfolios have been submitted, when they are, have been released, um, then how you promote them and see how it goes. One of the big things I think it will really help with is that when you give students a template portfolio consisting of say three, four or five pages for an entire semester, and you do want to track their formative assessment or you do want to use formative assessment um, so that the students can submit the entire portfolio, say here with week one already filled in, but the remaining weeks empty, can submit that you can take your time to assess that part of the portfolio, while in the meantime, the students continue working in their original portfolio. In the past, you would have had to give students separate pages and then tell them to put them all back together in one portfolio at the end of the semester so that it could then be submitted all together. Now, you don't have to go that workaround anymore. There are a number of other small improvements in Mahara um, that I'm not going to go into right now because I really wanted to focus on those two big changes and highlight those in particular because um, they, I think, will have an, quite a big impact potentially on how you're working with portfolios for assessment and also how you want to work with students for larger portfolio projects and track their progress. Which, of course, also takes us in general to what Joey had already alluded to in his introduction to the future of Mahara. You would have, uh, or you should have all received um, the information already, um, which we also shared with the wider community in regards to the funding future. 
and thank you for the hint about the main room, Jess, um, that we do need to make a change in how we fund the Mahara project um, so that we can actually continue the development work and also the, the support that we have been providing because while our Catalyst clients have always um, supported the project, maybe not always directly, but indirectly through commissioning services, through using our hosting in any of our offices, through doing directly development work with us or through our offices, that um, though is only a small portion of the community and the majority of community members um, are less engaged than you are. And so we do want to look into how we can change that and how we can also make sure that Mahara is um, sustainably funded uh, because it cannot only rest on the shoulders, especially from us here in Catalyst New Zealand, uh, catalyst.net uh, of the Catalyst IT group. And um, therefore want to have conversations with you and also um, community members that do not use our services to see what that future could look like. And really have concrete conversations then going forward in the next two months. So right now we've started that consultation period um, which will end at the end of June, at which time we will have a proposal ready that looks into well, what is the recommended funding model for the project going forward and what, of course, will that also mean to our clients and to com other community members um, going forward. Then we would implement that and in true Agile fashion, there would also be a review and most likely an iteration over it because, of course, there are always changes after some time. So I would very much like to invite you to participate in that consultation and you're welcome to contact your relationship manager or your consultant uh, that you work with at Catalyst IT Europe. They can forward um, us your feedback or you can contact um, our team here in New Zealand directly. And then um, we are also happy to put, put your name on the list to be invited to, to our sessions so that we can have those conversations with you. And if you'd like to contact me directly, here are all the different contact possibilities. I'll also put them into the chat for easier copying. Um, and I'd love to hear from you, be that on how you're using Mahara at your organization, what your plans are for Mahara, uh, what you'd like to be able to do, and see how we can give portfolios um, give portfolios the weight that I think they deserve in education and make them even more important at organizations because especially with the developments in regards to artificial intelligence and also assessment, I think there is a very good place and a very good case to be made for portfolios and um, that authentic assessment that they support. Now I think we are pretty much just at the boundary of the end of this session um, for yeah. when you might need to head off back into the main room. But yes, I'm thank you so much, Christina. And I just want to, you know, sort of back up what you're saying, you know, please get involved with, you know, the sustainability of uh, Mahara moving mm -hmm. forward. Get involved in the chat, you know, come to me on those links Christina shared. Because um, these enhancements in this latest version are amazing, you know, and they can only get even better and keeping ePortfolio, you know, is an important tool for assessment and, you know, for students sharing journeys. So thank you.